Unfortunately, my radio clock here decided to quit on me. And um, this thing, as you can see, is pretty old. Sony uh, Dream Machine. Uh, the issue here is that the the clock doesn't actually move and when I hit the hour and minute set buttons uh, this continues to increment which means that this, this uh, clock button here is somehow stuck down so usually when you set the clock you would hold down the clock button and then you know press the button there for the hour and press the button there for minutes and you will get uh, the increment on the display however we're stuck in that mode and we can't seem to get out of it so uh, let's take a look at what's wrong. Alright, it's powered off now, and interesting fact, this is one of the things I've never taken apart. Alright, I think I've got all those screws out. Uh, one thing to note, real quick, is that this is unplugged, and you do have to take note of the caution. The caution is there for a reason. So don't go poking your finger around there until you know what's what. Uh, so how to get this cap off, right? Well, let's see. Eh. Alright. Eh, well, I did it upside down. Alright. Uh, here we go. And the cover's off. We've got a speaker on. Oh. Okay. Wait. <laughs> Take a look at this coil here. Isn't that cute? So there should be a ferrite coil uh, and it just rests on somehow yeah this coil is not in the best position so let's see if we can uh, clean this board up and do something about it real quick it's held in place by like this plastic thing and when I tried to push it back in it snapped so now it will just be Kind of hanging like that, and I'm going to put electrical tape over it just to maybe hold it in place. Well, here's a look at the board. We've got uh, plenty of dust right there. Oh, all of the switches. Um, a troublesome uh, switch is this one on the left. Time. It doesn't appear that there are much high voltage stuff other than this transformer right here. Um, so do be careful that these two wires are the uh, where the power comes in 120 volts and AC again, when working with anything high voltage You got to make sure that You're safe because when you take a look at the input right here All right, that is 122 volts AC. so you don't want your fingers there So just make sure you turn this stuff off uh, if you're actually going to work on it. And we've got a Sony chip that's custom made for uh, this clock. And over here, what do we have? A... Yeah, dust. LM8560. Uh, I don't know what that is. A plastic tuning cap. Like you would expect. With a humongous knob underneath right there for turning that. There's this plastic band right here that just pushes uh, our little indicator. And when we rotate the knob, you can see the band just travels along with that. You see the black dot right there, someone made a mark. And it drives our little pointer on the front. And here's a quick look at the spring assembly here for the capacitor. It looks like it's just a band of plastic here that when you roll it, it just coils up and it pulls the dial indicator over. So that's quite neat. When you're putting the cover back on the radio, you're going to make sure that everything's aligned. So I just turn the capacitor all the way to one side, um, all the way to the left, like that. So you can align it like so, push it all the way to the left, and then put the cover back on, or put the board back on the right there volume knob with the potentiometer right up uh, there. One thing I love about this radio clock is that it has absolutely phenomenal audio 
I mean, for something like this, here, take a listen, right? I'll crank the volume up, and this, this volume will go pretty high. I get tune around. It doesn't look like that random piece of wire hanging up there does anything really to what I care about, because it still tunes. Alright, perfectly clear audio. And now, of course, we test uh, the switch that's in question. And right now it is open. You press it, it shorts. So, it is doing what it should. Alright, well, it's 12 o'clock again. Let's see if we can set it just by pressing this button. And no, we can't. And it's doing something. Okay, well, that's... <laughs> What's up with that? Uh, what? That's very interesting. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of jumping around. Um, I don't think it's supposed to do that. Yeah, we should take a look at the underside of the board real quick. See if it's just dust or something like that. Alright, well you take a look at that. So on the bottom side of the board here, we have the AC input, which looks kind of interesting. I believe this is solder flux. It's not anything burnt. It's just mm, some residue and stuff left over. Uh, they've got uh, some good clearance right there, so nothing goes there. Our coil. Third new tool. Like, I wonder what that means, third uh, new tool. Hmm. Uh, anyways, here we have some labels, U-C-A-P-A-I-T-F-R-A-U, so this is like country codes, right? It'd be like U.S., Canada, I don't know. Our buttons are right here. One button, two button, three button, and yeah, dust. Dust, okay. Three, four, five, and the really nice thing is that they've actually put in the little icon here for us to focus. I kind of see it. A little push button symbol right there with uh, two rails going across so these two should be shorted and when you press the button those should then touch and contact. Uh, so it looks like the physical button itself is working just fine but somewhere down the line something's not quite right. So here's an interesting find. It looks like the data sheets for both chips on board are still available. The LM8560N, which is the chip, uh, that one, right by the display board, is one of these things, digital alarm clock chip. And it looks like um, our digits and everything are all controlled by this one chip and there are minutes set so these are just pins that should just go right to the uh, buttons that are you're questioning and the hour set pin and also the where's the clock clock set pin I don't know but anyways that's there and the other chip here is uh, the CXA1019 that is just a FMAM radio chip so that corresponds to that one right there that's labeled Sony so I think how we should do this is go poke around and see what's around uh, this digital alarm clock chip since uh, we have an issue with the clock Alright, I took a second look at this diagram here, and it looks like all the stuff on this left side are output. So we have the seven segment display, uh, a couple of digits there with the AM, PM, you know, the hours, A, B, C, D, F, G, uh, the segments, colon. And on the right side we have a 12, 24 hour select, which, interestingly, uh, on the bottom of the board, it's labeled 24 hours right there. This label says 24H, so there's probably a jumper you can do. Uh, to make it 24 hours instead of 12 hour clock. Um, 
also we've got a 50 hertz 60 hertz input line so that's what actually does the timekeeping for you because uh, our AC power signal at 60 hertz here in the US is pretty darn accurate so you can keep good time off that hours at minute set notice there is no clock set pin which means that these pins should only be set when the clock set pin is pushed down so it's obviously like a, a feed through like a snake thing so when you push that button down on the far left can you allow a signal to go through here to actually go into the chip and so what we can do now is maybe just take a poke at what's going into the chip on the pins that say uh, hour set and minute set which is pin 22 and 21 right in the middle of the chip alright so I think this might actually work we're gonna probe a bit of uh, circuitry near high voltage stuff so now I've got a camera set right here on the scope and we can also take a look at this circuit at the same time. Okay, there we go. So you can see that whenever I press the button right here for these at the minute, I'm pressing, yeah, I'm getting a signal up there. And when I move over to pin 22, which is for the hour, uh, there we go, we're getting a high pulse except we're getting a kind of jittery thing if I hold it down uh... yeah well now it stays and how about this clock button here is this doing anything useful for us? well so that that side is high and get some more wire this side is low no nope, it's also high okay and well, how about here? This side is low, and that side is high. And that should not be the case, right? Because these two sides are supposed to be separate. And it's been working for a while, so, again, the audio is pretty awesome. <laughs> 